What up? What up with y'all? Alright, so somebody asked me my opinion on the coronavirus. They asked me. Sorry, I'm jamming. They asked me, is it gonna be a pandemic? <clears throat> Meaning it's gonna be all over the world. And uh asked me this a couple days ago. Now, I'm not the resident expert, obviously. Uh, And I think it was just because, you know, I told her that, you know, I finally finished my degree in health administration. And you'd be surprised because in health administration, a lot of what you do is look up the numbers. You know, you look up the numbers of how many, you know, people are infected by this and you know, how can it spread? You look at it, it's a lot of statistics into it. You have to actually have statistics, graduate, college statistics too. Uh, uh, so, uh, nonetheless, and accounting. So I struggle with both of those classes, but nonetheless, I got through them. Like I said, I'm not the resident expert. Um, but from that point of view, from that point of view, I... Here's, here's what I think. We've already got cases of the coronavirus here. And it seems like the coronavirus is nothing new also. And then when you start looking at the spreading of other diseases and how many, you know, people that killed off, you know, all the way back to the Black Plague, which was, what, 70 million people died off. And you look at how they died off, how it was actually spread by mosquitoes from Europeans, you know, uh shipping lanes, you know, basically it was a thing, a mixture of rats and pigs blood, and it was carried by mosquitoes. And then, of course, you have, you know, even further back, you have smallpox killed off a lot of uh, people in the Amazon by Europeans. Um, You have yellowpox, um, I believe, that killed off a lot of Indians. Uh, so, you know, when you hear about Wounded Knee, the Battle of Wounded Knee and all, you know, that kind of stuff, that was during that time, so that brings us up a little closer. Um, the people in the Amazon was way back, way back. Uh, so when you start looking at how things are usually spread, it's usually spread by traveling, of course, you know, everybody knows from one place to another. Now shipping lanes and airplanes and, you know, heck, we can do all kind of stuff to, you know, get something or someone from one place to another. We've already had a case where an American has died, but they died in China. So an American has lost their life over the coronavirus. We've also had cases where other Americans are affected. And now we have a thousand people that are quarantined because they got off either a plane or a ship. And they're being quarantined for, you know, several weeks uh, because of the, I guess, incubation period. I'm not a scientist in that reserve, so uh, I think that's what they're doing. So with the limited information that I have, my honest opinion is absolutely, it can be a pandemic overnight. Absolutely, 100%. Uh, does that make you want to panic? It makes you want to be aware. You know, I have always been one of these people where, you know, when I think something's going to happen, I start, you know, preparing for it. And, you know, some people are like, you shouldn't be afraid to go into the hood or you shouldn't be afraid to go into this club or you shouldn't be afraid to deal with these people. And I'm like, I'm not afraid. I'm aware. There's a big difference in being afraid and aware. And I'm aware of the potential, you know, and uh, of something that can happen because I look at the statistics of it happening. (laughs) Has it happened before? Can it happen again? What are the variables? I get, look, I like to get all into that. What's the propensity of this happening again in, you know, during my lifetime. So, do I think that the coronavirus can be a pandemic? Absolutely. 100%. Do I think it will be? Yes. I do. And if you looked at what happened in Wuhan, China, how 11 million people are pretty much quarantined. 11 million people in one part of China. You look at how they're treating those people now, you know, the 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 
they're still getting food in and out of it, which is good. You know, they're still importing, but a lot of the streets are closed. And, uh, you know, Brother Insan had a poem about it when the streets are closed. The streets are closed in Wuhan, China. They're closed uh, pretty much. You know, you might have maybe a store open every now and then, but it's pretty much, you know, shut down. So I'm saying to say this. If you don't have a mask, get one. You know, that seems to be slowing down. That seems to be slowing down the uh, the propensity of you actually catching, uh, you know, the infection or disease or however they want to call it. If you got some extra water in the house, you know, it wouldn't hurt to have a couple extra, you know, more jugs in the house. Uh, wouldn't hurt at all if you got some extra food in the house, some canned goods. Every time I go to the store, I buy four canned goods. I just buy four canned goods of soup. You know, it has everything I'm going to need in it. So, you know, if you got that, get that. If you got yourself some, uh, you know, some ibuprofen, some painkillers, grab an extra bottle of that. You know, 200 milligram or whatever. If you got some antibacterial, you know, stuff for your skin, it wouldn't help to buy that, you know, it wouldn't hurt to buy just some of that too because you don't know when the streets are closed and, you know, somebody might get a, you know, scrape or something, rub a little bit of that on it, case closed. Little alcohol or peroxide, those things also help. Uh, I'm not going to say go out and get a gun because that sounds, you know, a little extreme for right now uh, because people aren't knocking people out and trying to take what you have. Uh, so I'm not gonna, I'm not even gonna promote that. But I am gonna promote uh, being self-aware. Definitely, if you are a person with a, you know, large family, or you have a family at home, there's nothing wrong with being able to feed your family for the next month without going to the store. So if you can do that, if you can feed your family comfortable for at least 30 days then I would say that you're good because I think that the governments that are involved, for one, are not telling us everything. And when you look at Wuhan, China, and their response, you know, them building two hospitals in 10 days, nobody's playing around with this virus. You know, they're spraying, they're doing everything that they can. And I think that they're going to get a hold of it, but I don't think it will be permanently eradicated. I just don't. I think it's going to touch down in America. I think there are going to be some people who are going to die in America. I strongly believe that. And listen, I think there are some... And listen, there's a guy, he was carrying birds. He was carrying dead birds trying to get into the United States. And they stopped him. They stopped him because of the bird flu, Okay. But listen, I just think there's some people who want to see a bunch of people get knocked off the planet. I really do. And because of those idiots, I think you should be prepared. So regardless of how big your family is, just go to your closet, go to your cupboard, look in there and say, can I eat off of this for the next 30 days without going to the store? If my electricity is off, can I survive? If my water gets cut off, can I survive? These are the questions you need to ask yourself. And this is what I would prepare for if I was you. It's your boy, 202. God loves you. So do I.